it seems like some of these questions come into play with the driverless car, which we hear is, you know, is, is coming. It's, you know, we were did 20 years from now, most trucks are going to be, you know, speeding down the highway without any drivers or so we are told. And, and the world will be much safer. And presumably, to be able to do that, those driverless cars have to be able to be weighing all these different factors and maybe even, I don't know, counterfactuals, I don't know if that comes into play here. How far can that technology go, the, the driverless car? Well, for our own um, uh, uh, safety and well-being, we can hope that we do have driverless cars. Um, the question is not whether they could happen, but what what social things, what political things have to happen for them to be able to operate in this world, which reminds me that in, in my, when I was just beginning to study AI, I did finally read science fiction. I hadn't read it before. And I heard an interview with Isaac Asimov who said that the easy part of writing science fiction was, figure, it was imagining the technology. The hard part was getting the social interaction right. But is and, that and is that true with the driverless car though? Because yeah, I, I we, would think we, that yeah. the technology would be incredibly hard. I mean, to weigh all the factors that might happen out there, you know, dealing with other people, other right. cars, and all of that. Right. Well, that's that's to my point. If if um, and I I don't know if it will happen in twenty years or not. If we all got off the streets, if every person stopped driving. And either people stopped walking and riding bicycles, or they agree, we kind of, strip, can you imagine this? Just shut down all the streets one day and reopen them, and some are only for uh, autonomous vehicles, and some are for us. Or reconfigure the highway so that there's certain lanes that only the autonomous vehicles go on, and lanes that, that we go on. I, I, I described this to somebody who said, yeah, those lanes for the autonomous vehicles, they're called trains. <laughs> then it would happen much faster. The, the problem machines have is us. We're irrational, we don't follow the rules, and how on earth are they supposed to figure out what we're gonna do? And that's where the autonomous vehicles now are having trouble. I'm telling you, it's just us, but you know what? We were here first. <laughs> Roger, your take on driverless cars? Yeah, I welcome them. I think the world would be safer with them. I mean, it's pretty obvious. This is a limited domain, driving cars, 99% or whatever ratio it is, is normal traffic. In, and there are rules, and it should be uh, manageable enough. So, but there are extremes. So, you know, he, the, he the, the, one extreme is that, okay, Boston. there's a guy there, <laughs> and this person <laughs> is... <laughs> Sorry, Roger. I just, that person is I just insane. To point out reality so if, here. If the car had a full model of, of everyone, it would say, "Okay, that's that's a crazy person. He's gonna go into the street now, so we should stop the car." That's not gonna happen because then you need a full model of you know psychology and, and human beings, and you have to think counterfactually about what if that person now you know climbs up there and jumps over there. That, that, that the computer's not gonna go there, but most traffic is not like that. So I. Uh, yeah, for the record, it, it is a little quieter. You know, I'm getting worried about you, also. Roger, because I understand you're going to Boston tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, I mean, what, what I hear you saying is that the driverless car will Would probably prevent a number of accidents Absolutely. that now happen, but yeah. there's and there's a limit to the, the sophistication of the technology. Right. What I find troubling is that we, we set the bar higher for, for, for uh, things than for humans. I find this in the AI discussion that we often, oh, we can't have these uh, automatic cars because if there's this very particular scenario, it's going to kill people. No, I think, I think in most situations, a human would have equal problems with this. So there, I think a lot of these are fringe examples. So I, I think I'm not there's, this. well, there are some fringe examples, which I hope we won't mention, but... Um, <laughs> They're real examples, like the woman with the bicycle in Arizona, who, where, the, where the car didn't understand that was a woman with a bicycle and not a trash bag or something like that. So I, I just want to say I agree entirely with Roger that we would be safer. I hope we see the day of driverless cars. Actually, I hope it happens soon, because I'm tired of driving in Boston. <laughs> um, and not every... Um, 
whatever they're called. I don't want to advertise any company. You know, sh ride share drivers are good, and certainly not every Boston taxi cab driver is good. But So I think that, that there's a lot that could be done. There's a difference between asking about autonomous vehicles in the future and autonomous vehicles using the technology we have now. And I'm not convinced the technology we have now will get us there, although it has gotten us a long way toward there. But that's fascinating. But what you're saying is, I mean, this example of the computer in the car could not distinguish between, what, a trash bag and a bicycle. And, I mean, that's... So let me tell you something. I mean, that, that isn't so that what, sort of... Let me tell you something. If you take a <laughs> stop sign and you put a few big Band-Aids on it, the computer could mistake it for a speed limit sign or a yield sign. And we've run those experiments. You take certain images and you just twiddle a few pixels or those little dots that you sometimes see. I guess people who have digital cameras know what pixels are now. Um, you just twiddle a few of them, a human being looking at it, can't see a difference, and suddenly a poodle turns into a giraffe or worse. So they're very sensitive to the data they get. And there's actually some serious um, ethical societal issues about how they can be hacked. Well, doesn't so, that make you worried then? I mean, if just these little tweaks in what something looks like can throw the computer totally off and potentially do something disastrous, that makes what, me worried. That's what, I, that's what I want everybody in this room to worry about, not super intelligence is taking over. <laughs> and, you know, truth in advertising, time to demand that of AI systems.